What is going on out there, everybody? And thanks again for joining us here on Expanded Perspectives. That's right. It's me, Cam. And joining me, as always, sitting across the table. Well, actually, not really across the table, beside the table. Let's see if I can get this right. I think it's this one here. I'm not sure, though. I think it's this one. His legend precedes him the way lightning precedes thunder. He is the most interesting man in the world. How's it, do- how's it going, everybody? <laughs> yes, I'm here giggling, trying not to snort into the microphone. Um, if I sound a bit nasally... Um, it's because he is. My allergies this morning have just been terrible. I don't know what's blown in. That I, like, I've been sneezing. My wife was yelling at me to take... Uh, some Zizol, which is allergy medicine. I did, did that. I took some uh, some bumps of some Flonase to try to get my sinuses going. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I, it's it's, it's one of those bad days where I just I am I can't. My nose is completely useless. So if you hear a bunch of sniffling or people well, blowing, it, I, I apologize. It's normally useless almost all the time. Yeah, anyway, but, but, except just to keep your glasses up. Yeah, but when the allergies kick in, oh, it's bad. Have I don't you know. Ever the, thought? I know that what they don't know is you've been going through some. Some medical testing. So that's what nope, they don't know. Most of my life, yes. <laughs> but have, have you thought, have they discussed surgery with you? Yeah, they said at one point it might be necessary to help me breathing. But then one of the doctors was like, he doesn't recommend it. But, I mean, but it's easy for him to say he's not the one that struggles with breathing. He's not the one. His nose works. Yeah. No, I'm, it's been better. Um, yeah, some of the sleeping treatments and stuff I've been doing, it's been way better. But uh, yeah, it's just, you know, my struggles. I don't, I, right. Pound, hashtag. When did it, I always say pound because I'm old. <laughs> like now it's hashtag, but when did it, didn't it used to be the pound? It was always the pound sign, but that's back whenever you had like, you remember it wasn't the dial phone. It was the the old phone that you could still have the push button phone. Yeah, I remember that. And it had that the, the, the pound symbol and you'd have to put, well, it's the hashtag symbol now. Now, yeah. right. I remember you were making fun of me the other day because I said arithmetic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like nobody talks like that anymore. I remember saying it to my kids. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, math? You don't do, we don't do math. We do new math, Dad. What do you mean new math? There's only one math. It's, just it's math. universal throughout the whole cosmos. <laughs> math is math. Numbers are numbers. Right? That's so it. we arithmetic. had a really good time um, trick-or-treating this Halloween. I hope everybody out there did. And it, it was we had a cold snap here, so it was pretty cold for October in Texas. So I think that stopped all the kids from going out because my boys cleaned up. There were people giving like handfuls of candy because they're like, no kids have been showing up. And so yeah, what was it? It was like 24. Yeah, it was like 24 degrees out. Which is uh, it was snowing in the panhandle. But um, it's strange for here in October, man. Yeah, I think it's going to be a cold winter. I um, hope so. Me too. We, we need a good one. Um, But so there was lots of cool costumes we saw. But Luke's favorite absolutely was he saw a guy that was dressed as Michael Myers. And this guy had like his little Bluetooth speaker with him. So he's playing like the theme song as he's walking. And uh, Luke really enjoyed it. I mean, Luke had to go get like, he wanted to photograph with the guy. Like he thought the guy, I mean, I'm sure the kid that was dressed felt great because he felt like a celebrity for 15 minutes. Because Luke was like literally the only kid that cared. Like this kid had been spending time in his room creating this elaborate costume. I mean, everything was perfect from his one piece outfit he had on. I mean, this kid did his homework. Uh, but besides that, what would I say the most popular outfit I saw? I saw an awful lot of Thanoses walking around. Mm. Uh, a lot of kids in these like blow up dinosaur things. Those are hilarious. Some of them are pretty funny, but some of them, after you see the same one a couple times, you're like, eh, put a little more work into your costume. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> Try a little harder than just ordering it off Amazon and putting it on. I mean, I like the kids that make their costumes because that's the way I used to do it. Yeah. As a kid, is I would spend time. And when I say kid, I'm talking about even when I was like 22, 23. You're talking about three years ago, folks. Yeah, three years ago. <laughs> I remember one time I was I was dressed up as an archbishop, and I had to sew. The, I had to go to this this uh, linen store and buy this fabric and cloth that looked kind of like what a priest wears. You know, like those big wizard outfits they wear. And uh, I, I had a sewing. I had Delee's sewing machine. And I sewed this whole thing. I had. From my crazy hat, I made a, a sensor where I had I like incense. I mean, this. I put a lot of work into it, probably two weeks. Now, where did you get, when we had the big Halloween party and you came as the Roman soldier, where did you get that outfit? You had to have rented that somewhere. Yeah, I did. There was a, um, there was, there's a near Casa Mignana Theater in, in downtown Fort Worth. Uh, just a couple blocks away, they have this big, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, studio or something where you can actually rent costumes. But what these costumes are used for throughout the year is for plays and things that go on at that theater. So it's a massive building because that costume was spot on. And it used to be pretty leather. cheap. 
I mean, everything. It looked like it was like off of a movie set. Yeah, and I had to. I made my own phalanx. Yeah, which, which is like a huge spear. You know, I had in my hand. I had my Rottweiler with me on a chain. <laughs> Barnabas before he passed away. <laughs> Yeah, I used to put a lot of effort into the Halloween costumes. I like Halloween. It's probably one of my favorites. I liked the thing I chuckle at and giggle at and have so much fun is I like how animated the kids get. I was talking to one of my friends. His wife is a teacher, and the kids there uh, had been wearing their costumes. And she's like, I don't know what it is when those kids put on those costumes. They just act like maniacs. She's like, it's just a different pair of clothes. But for whatever reason, she said they were bouncing off the wall all week. The kids like to dress up. It's funny. It's the one night of the week that they can just really go wild, and it's a or I say of the week of the year. And my wife tries to like, just, okay, that's enough candy. I'm like, let them go. You you can't stop them from eating candy on Halloween. I mean, it's, the kids are already smuggling it like prisoners, like inmates. You know, they got it tucked different places. <laughs> it's gonna happen. My wife acts like if they eat all the candy in one period, like all their teeth are ruined the next day. You know what I mean? I'm like, just don't worry about it. They got instant diabetes from, from one night. One night, let the kids go, right? I, I make a deal with like, there's a tax, there's a dad tax. So what if I take you trick-or-treating and all this, you have to funnel the, like, the Snickers towards me, which is good because Caleb hates Snickers. So he's like, he you can have them all. So I, I cleaned up. I got a lot of Snickers. Caleb hates a lot of things. Yeah. I was looking on the interwebs. About uh, how candy at Halloween is popular by state by state. Again, do you know um, every year we got to talk about what's the popular? Yeah, what's the most popular uh, candy Halloween candy in our state? Do you know? I would hope like uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, that's it. That's is what it they really? Said. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say that or Snickers bars. Now, North Dakota, you would not care for because their favorite is candy corn. I know you. Why hate do they? Candy oh, corn. more than anything, yeah. right? Nebraska. This is odd. For Nebraska, they say the most popular candy is saltwater taffy. Really? Which I like saltwater taffy. I do just too. In Nebraska? That's just strange. I would figure it'd be like something along the coast. It doesn't sound to me like something that would be uh, like a Halloween candy. Like I wouldn't think you would hand out saltwater taffy. as ha- For me, some reason like Halloween always strikes me as like chocolates. It's got to have some, you know what I mean? I guess because the majority of the candy that you buy is chocolate. Although my niece called me the other day right before Halloween and she was buying a bunch of Starbursts. And like Skittles and stuff, because of some kids have like a certain allergy, I guess. So she was like, I want to make sure I got well, it. Definitely there's an allergy to peanuts. Is there, yeah. is there an allergy associated with chocolate? I'm sure there is. I don't know. I wish I had that allergy, but I don't. Yeah, I'm a big fan of chocolate. I'm a huge chocolate fan. Um, Yeah, saltwater taffy for Nebraska. I would I would picture saltwater taffy like on the Jersey Shore or something like that. Because I remember going to the boardwalk yeah. as a kid, we'd always get saltwater taffy. But uh, in Maine, they say Sour Patch Kids. Is the most popular in Montana? They said double bubble, which is just chewing gum. Huh? That's the most popular. There's not a lot of people up there though in Montana, so I guess it may not. be a lot slower times. Like everybody's more laid back. They just like chewing gum. In West in West Virginia, they say it's blow pops, and in uh, Take let's see, me home, Virginia, it's road. hot tamales. Hot tamales. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those poor people. Do y'all not have television? Y'all don't even know about other candies. Yeah, I'm not a big fan oh. of hot tamales myself. But um, oh, look, Wyoming is also saltwater taffy. What is going on with the ta- maybe? I maybe you and I are missing out. I need to get some saltwater taffy. Maybe so. So, did you and your family do any trick or treating? Uh, I did not. I was actually in a tree stand during Halloween. Uh, I was hunting. Now, my wife and daughter went with my niece and one of well, my oldest niece and her two children. And they all went around. So my great niece and my great nephew, which will be going to his birthday this weekend, he'd be a year old. Uh, my niece, my great niece, went as Jesse, and my and her little brother. He Who's went, Jesse? Who's Jesse? Jesse from Toy Story. Oh, like okay. And yep. he went as Woody. So they were both, oh, yeah, there and it was go. hilarious. So yeah, we're but they went and made the rounds and visited all the family and was just you know doing that whole thing and the whole deal. But no, I did not. I'm. When my kids got old enough to not go and, and trick or treat anymore, I don't go trick or treating anymore. Man, it's so much fun. Yeah, they don't they don't like to do stuff with dad. dad <laughs> I don't blame them. Yeah, I can't hate on them, but dad doesn't get invited. Y'all all know dad don't get invited on a lot of stuff, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> right? I've done my job. Yeah. Okay. Look, there's something before we go any further. Should I discuss what I found? I should probably wait till the end of the show to discuss that, shouldn't I? What, what are you talking about? 
Okay, you remember me telling the story a while back about the elderly couple. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. That should away. be. Yeah, we should wait till the end for that. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I will. We'll get into some more stuff, and then and then we'll. Yeah, I'll wait till that. Okay, I, I've got a story here. Then real quick, uh, since I'm already going to be talking about police stuff here, so there was a retired policeman and his family claims that they had saw a Bigfoot in Wisconsin. Okay, three. There was three people that involved. Now the fellow reported this, like I said, was a police officer. Says that his brother and sister. And of course, himself were driving on a back road near Tripoli, Wisconsin, when they observed an unusual being. This is back in the summer, man. This is July 7th of 2019. He says the day was clear and cool and that we were traveling approximately 10 to 15 miles an hour in a Chevy Suburban. And, this is, and he described all this to the BFRO. He said, I was looking out across the clearing when I saw a large reddish brown f- upright figure running along the edge of the trees in the distance. Now he goes on to say that this thing was hunched over, this creature, and he goes, it was way too large to be a deer. He said, and it didn't have the proper height or gait to be a bear. So I'm assuming what he's meaning is the mechanics of the way it ran. You know, like you see those videos of a bear walking upright. If it's not walking far, you could mistake in it for Bigfoot. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's moving through the open, the way it waddles because it's their legs are short, their hips aren't made to run standing up. So he's talking about the gait and the height. So he says that he turned to ask his brother and sister what they had seen, and they confirmed the sighting. His brother says, and he describes this thing as a six-foot-tall, hairy, reddish figure with no muzzle, so flat-faced, and no neck. He also said that the smaller trees moved aside like it was pushing its way into the woods. So that was a really interesting encounter that he couldn't see its face. He couldn't make out a lot of detail, but he did know it was large. It was moving. Like I said, the brother, nothing on it, like no neck and no right. face, which sounds like a Bigfoot. They always talk about it having no neck. It's just a head and shoulders. Man. Because it's so massive. But the way it was moving there in Wisconsin, Tripoli, Wisconsin, this past summer. So I, is, I, I don't know. I haven't even looked into that. I wouldn't even know how many bear. Are there bear in Wisconsin? Like, I can't imagine there being a lot of bear. I would, I would assume Wisconsin. so. There's got to be spots where there's probably yeah. some brown bear up there. So, well, black bear, just different phase, not really brown bear. I mean, brown bear is a coastal grizzly, so I don't yeah, think. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I meant like a, yeah, like a black bear. That's like, See, that's okay. the thing most people don't realize, that black bear come in lots of different colors, not just yeah. black. Blonde, cinnamon, brown. There's a lot of different colors of black bear, but it's the species of of bears, a black bear. Absolutely. Um, from time to time on this show, we've covered many topics, including like stick men, especially shadow men, oh. things like that. But we had an interesting uh, email the other day about a person that saw what they are describing as the silver man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check this out. He says, when I was eight, I woke up extremely early one day around 6 a.m. I rose my head up from the pillow and walking by my open bedroom door, I saw what I now call the silver man. He was tall, at least six foot. He had pretty long arms, had no discernible body features. He had yellow eyes and was entirely silver. Now, when I say no discernible features, I mean he had no joints. No facial features, no creases, no wrinkles. He was entirely smooth. His head was connected by a neck that widened out slightly like a peanut. He didn't have a chin. No overhanging hinges or body parts. No hair. As he walked by, he was slouched heavily. Despite how tall and heavy he looked to me, he only made soft footsteps. As I watched him walk by and passed my left vision... I heard his footsteps continue for only a few more steps before I never heard him again. I basically forgot about this a few days and chalked it up to being very tired. Today, my friend told me about a creepy thing that happened to him, and he reminded me of the silver man. We both tried figuring out if anyone else had ever seen something similar. There was only one story from Britain. An engineer was coming home one day from work when he saw a tall, silver-looking humanoid walking down a hill. He said it was slouching so greatly and walking so fast that a human would just fall over. When he got to the street where the engineer then slammed on his brakes, they stared at each other. The silver humanoid had yellow eyes. After a while, the human shot an energy beam from its eyes and paralyzed the engineer in his car. 
He said he lost all sense of time after that. When he returned into reality, his fingers were burnt, and the silver humanoid broke the gaze they held. The being then walked to a fence and melded through to the other side. The engineer sped home and realized it was after midnight. When his wife asked what had happened, he said he saw the silver man. I have no clue if we saw the same silver man, but one thing is clear. Something about him is masculine. I really want to know if anyone else out there has seen the silver man. Thanks. So what do you think of that? Well, I like the fact now that we're getting different. First of all, the peanut thing is crazy. Like the peanut head or whatever with no chin and all. I, but what? Okay. Like I'm, I'm picturing like the silver surfer. Well, I'm thinking, what could you misidentify to make it look like this? Like, is it somebody, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what you could misidentify to go. I saw the silver surfer. I'm with you though, though. I like how we're getting, you know, odd stories of different sightings, not just shadow men, but now silver man. He said it looked masculine. Uh, it just walked down the hallway. I mean, like he chalked it up to being tired for a while, but now that he's older, he's, he's been rethinking it. And the fact that he actually found an account from that engineer guy in Britain, that's pretty cool to That's like, pretty see awesome. something and find someone else. Oh, yes. Anyone out there, if you've had a encounter with a silver man, please email the show. There's so many of these hominids and these, I can't even say cryptids because it sounds more like, a, but all of these different humanoids, rather these humanoids, there's so many variables. Like we talked about in the last show with, with Albert Rosales and all the stuff that he kept up with. It almost, it's one of those things that needs to be a constant because it's like, like we've talked about, is it evolving? Is it changing? Because the way it feels is it feels like they come and go like with this interdimensional stuff, like they're around all the time. Like we always like to think of there's like black eyed kids, there's hat man, there's, you know, there's only like a handful that we know of. And then that's it. That's what we all see. But like even the book that Ken had written about the flying humanoids and all the, all the humanoids that involved in that. Now the silver man, it's like, it's changing. It's evolving to more and more to where we're seeing different array. Like there's almost as many humanoids as there are fish in the sea. Yeah. Like and I so like so many of them. It's crazy. And I like the emergence of new ones, like the glimmer man. Now the silver man. I mean, these are as a cryptid fan. Yes. Uh, it's, it's getting better, right? More people are coming forward. And I think that's largely in part to podcasts. Yes. You know, 10 years ago, podcasts barely existed. And now everybody kind of knows what they are. There's a ton of paranormal podcasts. People are hearing the other people's stories. It's making them feel like, well, maybe I'll come forward. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the thing is how many crazy sightings are there that are just suppressed where people have just clammed up and like, I'm not sharing that with anybody. Well, what's great is like, is like this person points out is they had that, then they go straight online and they start doing research and then they find out, oh, other people have seen something like this also. And it seems like that helps really bring people out as they were like, oh, I'm not the only person. Because if you were the only person that had seen anything like that, you would second guess yourself and think you were crazy. But when you start going on there, like, like we talked about with all the stuff that went down in Chicago last, what was it, year or so ago, all those sightings, more people had it, started seeing it, came forward and was like, man, I didn't realize that this was going on. Like, I'm not crazy. Like, this it, is actually a thing. It happened to me as a young man when I saw that green-looking orb the size of a basketball moving across that field when I was mm -hmm. hunting one morning. I saw it. You know, I was rubbing my eyes. Like, am I tired? Like, whatever. And I watched it. And then I just never said nothing about it. And I never said nothing again until my uncle brought up the strange sighting that someone else had on that same field. And once I heard them years then, later, then I came forward and be like, dude, I saw the same thing. Yeah. Years later. But you know, I didn't go, I didn't plan to keep hush about it. I just was like, I must be crazy. So yeah. I'm not going to tell anybody. I, I don't mean, know what that was. I don't, I still don't know what it was. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Once I heard someone else say that they had seen the same thing, I felt compelled to come forward. So I think that happens a lot. Yeah. A lot. Especially if you're somebody who's seeing things on the rig, like you must, you really must be, like, man, am I going crazy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? Because you've seen these people that... Um, like we always talk about, people are more in tune than others. And they're more susceptible to seeing things or to be aware of this stuff. And whereas you and I really aren't that aware of any of this stuff. So if you were seeing that all the time or you had more than one encounter with something like that, yeah, you would think that you were losing grasp with your reality. And at the same time, it makes me feel bad because how many people are locked up like in a sanitarium when there's really nothing wrong with them? That they're just, 
they're susceptible to that, and they actually are seeing stuff. And when they keep talking to their therapist, they're like, "No, this person is definitely crazy." Yeah, but maybe they're not. I maybe think they're just more perceptive. Often. I think about that often. You yeah. know what a curse. You know, people like me are like, "Man, I wish I could have an experience." And then the people that probably have them are like, "No, you don't. No, you no. don't. Yeah, you don't want it. You don't I definitely want don't want it. to be abducted by aliens. No." Oh, come on. But I would like to be out like, you know, just like gardening or something, uh, you know, trimming the bonsai tree and then see like a gnome or something. That would be pretty cool. You'd be all right with that? You don't want like a surprise probing while you're out? No, no, I'm gardening? not down with that. No, no, no. <laughs> no if, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's right, yeah. If there's one thing that I, I, I love is whenever you're looking for some cool stories, I reach out to Lon. And Lon always, he's like, oh, yeah, I got this. Or, oh, yeah, you checked it. He is... Like, I, I need to get Lon to pick up the humanoid torch. Of course, he's so busy now anyway. It would be ridiculous. But it would be fun for Lon to handle up with all the other humanoid sightings after Albert kind of re- retired from it. Yeah. When Lon eventually retires, I don't know who's going to run all that stuff. But that is a thing that I hope – I hate to lose all that. Like, I wish – some I, we may have to. I may have to. I think go. we should buy it. We should buy all of Albert's stuff, all of Lon's stuff. It'd be like somebody owning like the the Beatles Masters because it's a, it's something. a place that it can't. You don't want to lose this, no, because there's so many stories there. So this is one that happened back in December, early uh, December of 2009, and Lon had this going on. And and like I said, I I did a little digging, and the reason being is because what's coming up whenever I'm going to have somebody on the show here in a second, but it says. I do not wish to share the exact date because we were trespassing on private property at 1 a.m. at a Marysville, California cemetery, and I'm keeping our names unknown for now. It all started with this. I play drums in a band in San Francisco, California, and this trip consisted of myself and three other bandmates, the bassist, the singer, and a good friend that was a photographer. Now, we'd went up north to play a festival in Quincy, California. and This was a day trip. So we drove up early to Quincy, played, and then headed back. We drove through Marysville, and on the way up during the day, I noticed an amazing old cemetery. Thought nothing of it, of course, and however, on the drive down from Quincy, which was at around midnight, we were stopping off the side of the road in various places to take advantage of some out-of-the-box photo ops. We then all started to remember the old cemetery we had passed on the way up and kind of joking about how cool it would be to take some night photos there. We're all finally drawing near the location, in which, of course, the only landmark was a distant gas station. So when we saw that gas station and turned around to find the entrance of the road to the cemetery. Now, we enter this little road leading back, and there's a huge bar blocking any further access. So we park the car and get out and walk about 300 yards to an old iron gate leading into the graveyard. Of course, it's padlocked, and of course, it's one in the morning, and we read the sign posted. It says something like, access by appointment only, cemetery closed to public, and left a phone number written there for it for appointments. And at this point, I was like, guys, it's closed. Let's just get out of here. And the bassist, which happens to be my brother, said, no, let's jump this fence and take some band photos. This place is awesome. Well, the singer and I were like, no, we're just a little creeped out. So no, and besides it's trespassing, let's in the middle of the night, nonetheless, let's just get yeah, out of here. Right. Well, of course, what do you end up doing? We all jump the fence and make our way into the cemetery. Now there's only one very orange light in the center of the cemetery and numerous motion activated lights throughout it as well. Chills were crawling up and down all of our spines due to the fact that this was an adventure, of course, in itself. Now, we never brought up ghosts or anything like that or even feeling anything strange. And at this point, it was just plain creepy being there. And then the fact that that cemetery was so old and in the middle of nowhere. We did a few quick snapshots here and there under the orange lighting and in front of some old marble tombstones. We then just started to have a little fun running around joking and trying to scare each other. And about 20 minutes into our antics, my brother, the bassist, of course, mentions he wanted to go deeper into the cemetery. The rest of the band was like, nah, hell no, we're not going in there. It's pitch black beyond the orange light that we were standing under. Well, a few minutes later, in discussing going deeper, we heard a very clear, loud noise coming from that dark end of the cemetery. The sound was if someone had a very large sheet of metal and was rubbing it on a rock chills ran up and down our backs and we all stood there and asked each other did you hear that 
and everyone sounded off, yes, we heard it. So we stood quiet another moment. The sound happened again. It was a shinging sound. And in that direction, from the sound, there was a motion-activated light that came on. I would say it was about a hundred yards from where we were standing. It then turned off almost as fast as it turned on. Then, a little to our left, another light came on and then off, as if something was triggering it. Yet we all saw nothing. As at that moment, we all ran to the fence and jumped over to the outside of the cemetery. We thought maybe it was something coming to tell us to get out, or someone rather, that we were trespassing. But we ran all the way to the car and then was standing there catching our breath. There was no one in sight. It was just us. The sound kept occurring all the while, about every 30 seconds or so. So we stood bewildered by the car, quiet and a little confused as to what this sound was and to what was triggering those lights. Now, to say we were scared, well, that was an understatement, but we were also very curious about what was happening. So we remained by the car, and I started to smoke. So I lit a cigarette and staring off into the cemetery, and I kid you not, this next part is all true, and we could all verify it. I heard it first. A young girl's voice giggles in the distance. Now, I know this sounds cliche, and I know how silly it is, but it was a very real experience. I told the guys to quiet down. Did you hear that? We were all standing very quietly, and the young girl's giggles happened again. And this time, everyone heard it as plain as day. A third time it happened, and at that moment, footsteps running very fast in our direction was heard. Now, we all freaked out, jumped in the car, and started to drive off, and my brother and myself said, Stop the car. Stop the car. We are having real experiences out here that we wanted to try and catch something on film. We have the camera, right? So my brother and I get out of the car with our friend's camera and stand above the cemetery and start filming. And what we catch on film, crunching noises, tractor engines, but we actually caught on film what we think to this day is an apparition of a woman in a dress. Now, folks, there's a YouTube video link that's going to be tough to find. I'm not sure it's still up on there, but I'm, I might be able to find it again. But it's very, very bad quality. I watched it. I wouldn't suggest it. It looks like a floating orb, basically, is what it looks right, like in yeah. that cemetery. But it sounds like these this band, this group of folks, ended up having some sort of interaction with some sort of apparition. So they ended up filming it and then of course got freaked out, got in the car and ended up leaving after they filmed this whole orb thing. But like I said before, you don't know, this could be easily a flashlight or a light glow stick out there and they're filming it and made up a whole story. Who really knows? Because it doesn't show it's first of all, to film at night. It's very difficult and it doesn't do it justice compared to when you're really there. You know, how many times have you been to like a concert or something somewhere you filmed it or photographed it. And when you get home, you're like, ah, it looks cool, but it just doesn't do it justice. You oh, had yeah. to be there. How many times you hear that? Like, you had to be there. I think of it when me and my wife a couple of years ago went to- I don't the, want to hear this. The Redwood Forest oh. up in Northern California, you know, the Avenue of Giants. I filmed a lot of it. I have GoPro footage of it. I have photographs. But I'm telling you, the pictures don't do it justice. You have, it's one of the things where you have to be there. You have to experience so it. So I think yourself. the same thing. Like, people have these paranormal experience or they see what they see is an apparition or an orb or a ghost. They try to film it. But then when you watch it, it just, it, it doesn't translate. It looks terrible compared to what they really saw or the sounds like hearing a child laughing that when you were telling about the chinging sound like metal, I was thinking of like two spirits, like sword fighting. That's what I'm thinking. I was thinking of something sharpening like a machete, like uh, you see in the movies on a rock, like a stone. Yeah. yeah and they yeah. always are sharpening like that. That's the the noise that I was thinking of whenever we were, I was discussing that story, but you know what? It could have easily been an apparition or anything that took offense to them in their horse ass and around. Well, there's a lot of stories, you know, in cemeteries where people hear stuff or see stuff or, you know, you're not supposed to be in there at night or or you're disturbing the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, these stories are probably in every town throughout the, the world. Oh, yeah. And you're, like, you're already keyed on because you're in a cemetery. Yeah, right. So you're already a little bit nervous. And speaking of being keyed on in a cemetery... I uh, I got my sister-in-law to come in and sit down with me and tell a little bit of a story of something that she experienced and that happened to her when she was younger 
uh, of in the cemetery that's here in town, the oldest cemetery that we have in our town. And so it's a really interesting story. It's not very long, so I hope you enjoy it. So when we come back, we'll be talking to my sister-in-law, Paula, about something strange that she was involved with. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. All right, y'all. I had, like I alluded to before we took the break, I have uh, sitting next to me for this little chit chat one of my uh, one of my most favorite human beings on this planet. Uh, we've had a lot of fun together, a lot of laughs. Uh-huh. Yep. And now she's messing around with the soundboard. Uh, yeah, folks. This is my sister-in-law, Paula, and. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have invited her in here to, to do this, to tell this story. Look, she's got a really great, interesting story. I might have even told a little of it at one time several, a few years ago, I think. I can't remember. So anyway, we have, just to get right into it, we have a thing here in the town that that we live in that what everybody growing up around here knows as the witch's tomb. And it's in an old cemetery that's known as the Greenwood Cemetery. And I believe, is it... Is it Loving or Good Night that's buried there? Do you remember? Both. Are they both buried there? Mm-hmm. Okay, th- the, what we're talking about are the men that if, for those of you that are familiar with uh, the story of Lonesome Dove, the book series and the movie series that spun off after it, is about the Good Night Loving Cattle Drive Trail. And the men involved in that are buried in that cemetery here in the town we live in. And it's in the same one that they have this, it's... As well as Deets, Bose Acker. Yep, it was he's... Place yep. after Deets. The, yep. It's actually called the Old City Cemetery. Here There's we go, folks. See, six, I got it wound up. <laughs> there are six historical markers inside the cemetery with the cemetery itself actually being historic marker. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. There is some really awesome old grave sites mm-hmm. there. And the one that we're talking about, looks like it's almost built into the side of a hill mm-hmm. the way it is. But it's always been known as the the witch's tomb and the tale was you could go there and like at night and you would knock on it and you could hear knocking on the inside like it would knock back or maybe scratching mm-hmm. and it being that tonight is actually halloween night it seems fitting because that was when a lot of people would go up there too mm-hmm. and mess around with it so i'm gonna let paula take it and then i'll probably interject and throw some stuff around here and ask her some questions but start off with like when you first learned about it because like like you talked about mm-hmm. y'all's grandparents were right there mm-hmm. Our grand, my grandparents lived right across the street from the cemetery on Front Street, and they had the best neighbors in town. Quiet, not a big fuss. You only heard about it every once in a while. Back then, there wasn't a fence around the old cemetery or anything. Now there's a fence where it opens at daylight, closes at dusk. Mm-hmm. The police come around, lock it up at night, those kind of things. When we were kids, that wasn't there. And anytime we had family in from out of town, they liked to go walk in there. They always heard the stories about the witch's tomb. And so you would take them over there. We would walk through there, go to the witch's tomb. Um, show all the cousins. Deep, show all the cousins. Kind of deep in the cemetery. Um, it's uh, it's yeah, it's not it out. It's not like you could spot it from the road. No. If you know where it's Mm-mm. at, you can go right to Mm-mm. it. No, but it's kind of it's in a creepy part of the cemetery with the big, tr- the oak trees, oak a bunch trees, of like post oaks over it and all you, that. And it it kind of um, the road is narrow and turns. It really originally wasn't bit, built for vehicles. They've made it a little wider so you can drive down. It was made there. for carriages originally, carriages, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and wagons. Yeah, so it kind of winds around um, like a lot of old cemeteries do, I suppose, with um, you know graves on each side. And when I was a kid, it was deeper, if that makes any sense, because it kind of had a walkway down to it where it was built into the side of the ground, and it had like a red carpet with. Um, like a little black chain that went up to the road and leading down to the tomb. leading down to the tomb. And, uh, the, the railroad tracks run right beside there as well. And we were growing up when the railroad, when a train would come by and maybe squeal its brakes, that would cover up the, the cries of the person or per persons that might be inside of it. And when I was growing up, we always heard that it was a doctor that lived in town who had a mistress And this was his wife that passed away during childbirth. And perhaps she wasn't all the way dead. And they said that would happen sometimes back in the old days. Whenever they thought somebody was dead, they couldn't physically feel a heartbeat. But maybe the heart was still beating. It was just really faint. Mm -hmm. So they, the story was that she was buried alive in there with her baby that had passed away during the, during the time that she passed, that she died. So... That was the story that, so do you know, where did it come up with the whole idea of the witch's tomb? 
Well, because she was supposedly buried alive. That was that was the that part was that the led part. into that it. That was the witch, and she couldn't get out, and she would scream and scratch and couldn't get out. And it and I guess it made sense because if the doctor had a mistress, mm-hmm. it would be easy if he, she passed away, or even if it was questionable, you would be like, well, he's just going to stick her in there to get rid of her mm-hmm. now, or maybe it was something yeah, along those lines. That was kind of the story. Get her in there. She's dead. I can move on with my life with my mistress. But now, like you said, you several people have looked for these this story. Mm-hmm about the history of mm-hmm. that tomb and you can't find anything about it. Mm-mm. And I'm not the only one. We've had some friends we've talked about on different occasions. We've looked it up and it seems like we could find things in the past. And now all of a sudden we can't find anything at all about it. Like there were newspaper articles about it. I know there were, but now we can't seem to find any of those articles or anything. And that was prior internet, my teenage years, but we always remember hearing these stories and occasionally somebody come along and write a story about the real, what really was supposedly happened in there. Um, When I was a teenager, we were in town, everybody drug Maine, you know, that's Mm -hmm. all we did, drive up and down South Maine. And I ran into one of my cousins at the Whataburger, because that's the only thing open. Exactly. And uh, yeah, and it was the Whataburger then, because we only had the one. (laughs) And they were like, hey, we heard that somebody... Busted out the top of the witch's tomb. And over the years, there were different, it had been broken. It was brick in the front. And uh, some people had vandalized it and different things. So we heard that it had been broken into. So we got a flashlight or a couple of flashlights and went down there. There was probably about 10 of us that went in there. And we parked our cars inside the cemetery pre fence. And we get out of the cars, we go down, we got our flashlights, we're walking down to the which is tomb and looking in. And of course I'm going first. You're 16, 16 or 17. Mm-hmm. Your heart's got to be racing at this point. It's, black. You're like- <laughs> it's cold. It's in the cemetery. It's at night. Um, Just <clears throat> terrified of what might you might. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it, but I got to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to do it. I have been to this cemetery a million times. I have got to do it. The curiosity yeah. gets me every single time. <laughs> And there was just a couple of us that got out at first, and we're walking down there. And I had to kind of step up to look into it. And just like broken at the top. Yeah, kind of. And it was um, a half circle at the top. Okay. So it goes up. Was it like a door? Because it's all bricked mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. It, it, so there once was a door there. Once like there a, was like a door, a, like a tomb type door. I got you. Like a, like a then carved they, Then they stone. bricked it up, and then some of that was broken out. So the brick went up probably four foot tall. And then the half moon on the top was cement. And that cement had been broken out. So we thought, oh, it would be a good time. You. be a good time to go. So you got up there where you, where you could see over. Mm-hmm. I could see over. I was halfway in. So you're not a giant of a person, so it's not like it was real high. No. It's not a big, tall hole. <laughs> it wasn't a big, tall hole. No, like I said, over the years, it filled in kind of, I guess, with erosion and things yeah. like that. It was, you know, it used to be more dramatic than what it is now. So you could just kind of <laughs> walk up. Didn't we up. all? Yeah. <laughs> Lean up, and I look over in, and I have a flashlight in my hand. And I'm the only one that sees inside of it at this point. Yeah. And then someone yells, run, Paula, run, because the lights came on and the cops were in there. They oh, were, <laughs> so the police were. <laughs> they were staking it out. They just wanted to make sure that nobody had vandalized. They knew that we didn't bust it out. But they knew it just broke, so they were just they watching. They broke. They were just watching. They didn't want to be going there and desecrated any further or vandalized gotcha. it any further. So what did you see with the, the light when you shone in there? Were there multiple? Mm-hmm. So it's not just like a giant sarcophagus mm-hmm. with only one person. No, There's, we had what, Is that what they call it, a sarcophagus? What did they actually call that? I forgot what it's even called now. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's, I forgot what, I'll figure it out. But I anyway, so you so, shone your flashlight through mm-hmm. that broken area. It wasn't big enough to crawl into, Mm-mm. just no, enough no. to kind of look in. I was, pr- well, it was, yeah, if you tried hard enough, you could have got all the way in there. Could have got in there. Uh-huh. I had no intentions of going all the way in there, but you just I did, wanted to had get to up peek and look. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then later on, you know, we were told that it wasn't really a witch's tomb. And that's not really what happened. It was just some rich man's wife that had passed away. And we'd, you know, we'd always heard that that was the story about the mistress. But um, I saw two, um, they weren't really ca- coffins, I guess you'd call them. They weren't really caskets. But they were concrete more than likely, Mm-mm. weren't they? Or were they old coffins? Old coffins. They were made out of wood or some kind of s- something like that because the um, the larger one, and then there was a infant size. That's the one I was about to ask you. A child or an infant yeah. size one. And it was um, wooden, 
like the vampire ones, you know, that are flat yeah. on the top and that go <laughs> yeah. down. Like the that. old school. The old school, you know, wide herb. Kind yeah. Of, yeah, like that. So They can't see your hands, Paula. Okay, well, you get <laughs> vampires, those kind of caskets. But it was made out of wood. But the the larger one was open on the head end, like it had been broken open on the head end, and you could actually see what was uh, probably hair. Okay, that's a little unnerving <laughs> at that point. You were mm-hmm. like, I'm out. Mm-hmm. And then the cops, and then everybody, and everybody ran. Everybody just turned the lights, and everybody took off running. Yeah, I ran. But now, okay. But then I had so, to come back, and so, the car was in there. Yeah, but you didn't hear any <laughs> of the knocking or the screaming. Did you ever mm-hmm. hear any of that? Um, Growing up as a kid, yeah, we would hear it, and my grandparents Like before it was it broken, up. like you could go in there, and you could hear what they said. Was knocking, uh-huh, more of a, yeah, like a deep, well, knock. Like a, so you could... You would knock on it, and then you could, and it wasn't an echo. Mm-mm. You could legitimately hear like something was in there. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear the screams like or any rip- calls or Mm-mm, just the really, knocks? Just the knocks. The screams were always chalked up as the uh, railroad tracks. I got you. Now that wasn't the only thing that you had happen Mm-mm. in that cemetery. Mm-mm. <laughs> it's it sounds crazy to people, but literally like. Across the street. Like, that's just where you would go yeah. and hang out as kids. Yeah, it didn't weird us out or anything, so it was always there. And oddly enough, my other grandparents that lived in Oklahoma lived down the street from a cemetery. Yep, yep. And so we would ride our bikes up there and ride the trails. I mean, we, it wasn't a weird place for us to be. It was just off the road kind of thing. Yeah. So it wasn't weird for us. And um, I had my cousins had come down. We'd always walk in there. And um, one time we walked in, and there was this weird gold casket um, to the right, which would have been the west of where we walked in at. And I had never seen it before. And it was just weird. sitting out there. It was setting up like on the top of a grave. Like sometimes I put those covers on mm-hmm. to symbolize it. And it was just sitting over there. And I walked about halfway to it and thought, that is the weirdest thing. I've never seen that before. So we walked on down to the witch's tomb. Me and Daniel Ray mm-hmm. thought, came back. <laughs> Because I said, when we walk back, we're going to walk over there. When we came back, it was gone. Complete. There was no. It was. There was nothing there. So you know, you physically saw what it was. So how, when you walked towards this gold casket, how far were you from it? Um, twenty feet. So there's no mistake in it. No, it was there. And then shining how far, in the sunlight. How far was it from there to the witch's tomb? Um. Because what I'm establishing is nobody drove in there and loaded no. that sucker up no, while y'all no. were there. Oh, gosh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, the, the, the witches. Because they probably, don't understand how what we're talking about is the length of the winding road and all that stuff is. It was just it, around the curve to the witches. Yeah, tomb, it's not so maybe far. 30 yards, you know, because the witches. So tomb nobody probably, walked in and grabbed it. No, nobody was behind us. You couldn't, from what we saw, <laughs> there's no way that you could just pick it up and walk out with it. And you come back and it was gone. It was just gone. I'm like, I know, I'm, I ask them, no, it's not there. Maybe, you know, it was like a, it wasn't a, you know, it could have been a reflection of a casket. I don't think so. I mean, it was just. There's no way. Above the ground. I what was it reflecting off of? It's not a hologram. That's what I thought. Right? Maybe a hologram. <laughs> I don't know. It was gold. It was gold. Is that the only wild stuff you ever had happen over there? Mm. Because I'd talked to a bunch of people, like kids that I'd gone to school with, mm-hmm. had the same thing that you're talking about. It happened with them knocking on that mm-hmm. and then getting the, re- almost like an echo. It's almost like an echo. But, but it, it's not. Because mm-hmm. it's not the same rhythm. No, it's not like bump, bada, bump, bump. Yeah, yeah. Like you could <laughs> knock a rhythm out and then you could hear the Good rhythm. rhythm. It's, no. It responds just, with its own rhythm. Yeah. You know, three times. Almost like whatever. it's an intelligence dun, to dun, it. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. Back to it. Mm-hmm. That is so crazy. Yeah, it was weird. Lots of weird stuff. Um, I don't have any explanation for it. Um, but it was it's been that way my whole life. Where we just always heard different stories about it. The whole, but we can never find <clears> what <throat> really cemetery. happened. Mm-mm. No, and I know. And that, like I said, even now I've gone back to try to research it with the internet and things yeah. like that, and it's just gone. And friends of mine on Facebook that were with me that night that we were in the cemetery that didn't make it all the way up there to see what was inside have tried to look it up and haven't been had well, any success. We've got a friend and she's a real good friend of yours that was involved in all of the 
when they were doing the cemetery tours. Yeah, and I've been a docent on that yeah. too. And they can't find the real mm-hmm. history of that tomb. <laughs> like nobody really knows. It's been mm-hmm. there for so long. Mm-hmm. It's it's like something because everybody Somebody's has lost something. Well, everybody has those funeral homes in their hometowns mm-hmm. that are probably old. Mm-hmm. Some not maybe not everybody. We have a couple that have been here literally since the town was founded. Mm-hmm. And some of these have been in the build the same original building mm-hmm. since like the early 1900s. Right. So these built they have extensive records mm-hmm. to start with, and they're creepy as hell to, yeah. <laughs> to go into to start. We have mm-hmm. a joke about one of them here that none of us will let the others be mm-hmm. have their funeral in that mm-hmm. funeral parlor because it is a it's, it's like phantasm. It is a terrifying place to where that goes down a, at. It's the worst you can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. what you imagine scary movies are filmed at yeah it's yeah. that one yeah <laughs> and so when there's no record of anything they that they can't even leave Mm-mm. it makes you wonder where that and, and you so now much other just like what there. you had heard you had heard that well maybe there was only one but now mm-hmm. you saw two in there i saw two caskets in there so it leads you to believe that the, the wife and the daughter or the mm-hmm. wife and, and the child, child a small yeah. child there was a definite there was definitely two definitely so that goes into part one, of the story that you had heard a small one mm-hmm. but there's no other there's, there's no paper no other, trail to and it. there's paper everywhere else i mean i can tell you the the oh everything around that's documented all the history just like bozak or oliver and the the love everybody's in there yeah. their families are in there the history of them moving their families there after they'd passed away i mean both of those have large plots there that their families are there the cats the morals they're the tallest the biggest ones in town they're the ones that moved to our county and put the first bank in i mean there's all this history of all these different and ones, then the witches too mm-hmm. and it was there before um, mm-hmm. i think any of them it's it is one of the oldest ones because it is in what we call the old part of the cemetery yeah. yeah it's still it's still unnerving the fact that nobody can f- really find any more history on it it's like it was mm-hmm. it's like it was covered up or erased from history purposely and i'm third generation here and nobody still they're like i don't <laughs> have any idea no idea no, I don't know. well i thank you for spending a little bit of time sure. just hanging out for 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 halloween sure and sharing your story i got you to tell me that one other time so oh, here we go again no don't you punch those <laughs> buttons i gotta get her out of here folks all right i'm gonna drop her off real quick and then we're gonna come back with more stories all right all right so thanks quick shout out to my sister-in-law paula yeah thanks for her for coming on there she is literally like she's one of my favorite human beings because but she's she's crazy like i don't mean like oh no she's wild and fun and look she's We've been in, we've had a lot of adventures. Like she's always down for, if you have something crazy, like, oh, let's go do this. She's like, all right, let's go check it out. She's always down to go check it out. It is some funny stuff. But yeah, so Kyle and I have been to the witch's tomb. We've all, everybody's been to the witch's tomb. She is the only person that I personally know that has ever been able to look inside it, that knows what was in there. So I was always told, that's what we get with that story with her talking about the, the fellow with the, uh, the mistress. And then that his wife died in childbirth and it was always, that was always some of the whispers and all this stuff. But like we said, we can't ever find the whole thing, but I was always told it was only one person in the witch's tomb and the woman buried in there was actually a witch and that she was sealed up in the tomb. That was a story that I was brought up with when I was a kid, but then to find out this and then for them to say that the the mother was buried with the daughter or the child rather, I always said the daughter, but the mother was buried with the child in that, that tomb And then to find out when she looked in there, she saw two caskets or the old school coffins rather. And she even makes a joke about it, like the old wild West Dracula coffins, but that they was one, a small one for a child. And so it kind of, it goes more into the original story that you think that there might've been something, but what's still weird is the fact that we, we can't find any history on it outside of that. But there has been lots of people I know claim that they hear knocking and scratching and stuff inside that Mm -hmm. tomb for years and years and years. But when she talked about seeing the golden casket 30 yards from when they walked by going to the witch's tomb much, you know, quite some time after the first time she looked in there and then going back and it wasn't there. Like there's, there's something to be said, I think about old cemeteries and like the old parts of cemeteries, much like when you and I, Kyle, went up there and went up to, uh, whatchamacallit, what am I thinking of? The the crash. I just went blank 
the oh, Aurora at Aurora, the Aurora yeah, Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. That's the old part of the cemetery that they had the the little creature in. And when you go to the the Greenwood Cemetery here, there's an old section like she discussed that's now has the wrought iron fence up around it and all this. And like we said, it's you know very narrow because it was made for carriages and wagons to get through it. But you can go and go through there, and I mean there are old old headstones, and it's yeah. I mean it's. My An dad, ancient one. My father, who was a professional land surveyor, he would tell me all the time, or they'd be out on some big ranch, you know, just out in the middle of nowhere, and they would stumble upon like a little cemetery with like 50, 60 graves in it. I used to. And he didn't know if it was like just like a family little plot, mm-hmm. but he said some of them were like really old. I used to hunt on a place west of here that. In an area, there was a, a big wheat field, and then there was some live oak thickets around there, and there was one section of live oaks that was – it was cleared in a way that – you got to imagine like a peninsula, let's say, of live oaks, the way it sticks out, but the center part of the peninsula had been cleared. So there was live oaks all the way around it, almost hiding it, and in there was a family cemetery of people that lived here at like a – before – Weatherford and Parker County was even a county. Like it was still just, it had never been really turned into anything. And yeah, those, and it's, it's on like uh, the cemetery list, I believe for the historical sites, there's historical markers and things. But yeah, when we first, when I was first shown that cemetery, there was no historical marker. Like that had just been on that land. And the people that had owned that land that had bought it throughout the time had just always, I will say this, they, the people that owned the land fenced it off and kept it very neat, very clean, didn't let it get overgrown. They still honored what the people in that cemetery, even though it had passed through multiple hands throughout the time. But yeah, it sets on probably 300 acres, but you have to know where it's at, but you can go, I can take you right to it right now. But it's the same way. It's an old, old cemetery. Yeah. And when he was doing the the surveying, whenever they would come across like that uh, cemetery, they would have to list it or tell it to the government to because there was a lot of them that were unre- they were just unreported Yeah, because the old ranchers that owned them, they just, they just left them alone. Yeah. There's just like, that's not my business and I'm not going to, you're not going to build something on top of it or just dis- desecrate it in any way. They just left it. They just left it. I bet there are a ton of them, not just throughout the state of Texas, but all over when you get into some of those big ranches and big areas like that, I bet there's a lot of them that, that are still unlisted. I bet oh, it's, I'm sure. I bet it's still out there like that. I'm sure. Well, how many people were buried like they didn't erect a tombstone? Oh, yeah. Just, just just buried. Like, here's a live oak tree. Let's bury him there. There's probably skeletal remains all over. I think about that lots of places that I've hunted that have like old farmhouses and old that have been well, like the place I'm on now. The farmhouse was that was on it was an old farmhouse and an old outbuilding and a windmill. And I showed you, I took you out there and showed you that whole thing. And Texas A&M was actually doing, uh, sending up while they were having excavations done for their students to come and volunteer time. And they had it gridded off for several years doing digs and stuff there. And I always think about that as like, well, I wonder if you have to think about it. If you had a child that passed away, uh, like right, you know, in the first few months of their life, you would bury them on the home place. Which was, and that was very common. Well, yeah, and they didn't report it to anybody because it, who are you going to report it to? I mean, it, it, we didn't have the laws and the things that we have in place now. It was just like we lost a child and we buried him over there, you know, and that's just how it was. I bet. I mean, I bet you everywhere is pretty much littered with that, yeah, no matter I, where, where you're at, even if you're in the UK. I mean, I'm sure. Oh yeah, the people UK just buried may be worse, you know, <laughs> because of all the wars that went on over there. I mean, it's just it's it's interesting to think about. Yeah, it's got to be tough from like. A forensic standpoint, though, because you could like stumble upon bones. Oh yeah, that's when you have, have to call no them idea. In. Yeah, you just have to age them or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of death and, oh, and creepy and stuff, a couple episodes ago, you told us a pretty interesting story about the the mysterious death of two old elderly people. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. You mentioned to me earlier this week that you had some updates or something else. That I've you got to something talk else. About. So yeah, please. Okay, so uh, I train. Uh, jiu-jitsu with uh, several of the officers here in town. And of course, working for the city, I know several of the officers, almost all of them. So uh, I haven't got to speak to the officer yet that was involved in that, uh, the first story that I had shared about the, the the couple that had just looked like they had just been unplugged, the old elder, elderly couple. So I have more information I'm going to have to get from them. Apparently there were some more things that I haven't 
I wasn't told. There's some other wild, weird stuff that went on on that one. But we had something happen about a week ago. And uh, I had no idea. And my buddy Shad sent me the information about it and was asking me about when did, you know, what episode did I do the one on on the other couple? And I was like, man, I don't remember. I don't remember which one it was. And he said, I was going to, you know, he wanted to show it to his friend, let his buddy hear it. But he was like, have you heard about this? And I go, no. So I ended up asking my wife and then, of course, ended up going around and ended up talking to one of the officers that was involved in this. We have an interstate that cuts not really through our town, but on the south edge of our town. Now the town's expanded around it, but it's Interstate 20. And if you look at I-20, when you leave here and take I-20, you'll go all the way to Shreveport, Louisiana, and then some. But if you head west, of course, you'll go all the way out to where it becomes Interstate 10. And I-10 runs into El Paso and continues that way. But right as uh, I-20 gets into basically the county line of Parker and Tarrant County, it splits to I-30 and I-20. So we have a lot of traffic on that interstate. It's a main thoroughfare through the state of Texas. And there's, of course, a lot of hotels that are built right off of it here in our town. Well, we had a what was determined to be a murder-suicide which is a sad thing. A man and his wife that was estranged, of course, met up here. And and, and I don't have the gruesome details of all that. And I don't want to know, you know, of how that all went down. Yeah, of course. But th- this is where it gets weird. Uh, so they have to look over the footage of the security cameras to make sure that nobody else came and went in that room during the time of what they, the time of death that they believed that the couple, you know, expired at so that they could, you know, rule out foul play of any sort. So they, you know, they do all the stuff inside the room, but now they're watching outside to make sure. So one of the officers, of course, is assigned to sit there and watch the video. So they're going through the video. So, and one of the officers that I spoke to has actually seen the video themselves and watched it numerous times. While they're watching this video, it shows, you can see where the doors of the place are at, you know, and all this stuff. But it's more like if you could imagine a corner and a hallway, right? So it's like it comes out and there's like the hallway and all this stuff. But anyway, the way the cameras usually always set up on a corner watching the hallways and all this. And at one point, they're watching it and all that. He said that this orb, like baseball size orb, comes shooting past the camera down the hallway. And then it's followed by in a few seconds, another one comes down the hallway. And then for the next hour or so, there's all these little lights. And and he, he didn't say insects. He didn't say anything. He's like these little balls of light, like stuff moving around on the screen. So he starts, said they start rolling back and scrolling back and they're like, what is that? So they, as they play it over and over, that's when they noticed that these orbs don't appear to around the exact time of death that they believe that these two people passed away at. Wow, that's crazy. So they right, so it's like their spirit. It's almost like their spirit, and then something. Yeah, the orbs left, and then something else came down to join them, or whatever it was. But yeah, so I'm hopefully, I'm hoping and hopeful that I will get to see the video. That's what I'm shooting for. Is I think I'm going to get to actually take a look at the video footage to see those things myself. But Man, yeah, that's cool. It's, it's not anything big and home, but it is odd. It is different. So, but this is also the officer too, that was like, and there's more to the other story about the elderly couple. And, but here's what was wild is talking to the two officers that were there that I trained with. It does seem like, and, and I even ask him straight up, I go, is it weird for you? Because this fellow has been an officer for over 20 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Investigator. He, you know, beat cop. So he's seen everything, you know, the greatest sides of humanity and the worst sides of humanity. And so I straight up asked him, I said, is it weird whenever you, it catches you off guard like that? And he was like, there are certain things that happen that you're not prepared for. You know, like you prepare yourself for all like the, the gruesomeness and how horrible we can be to one another, how humans can be to one another. But he's like, when you see something like that, he's like, you're not prepared for it because nobody talks about it. They right. don't teach you about, you know, this, this is something that's not supposed to happen. You know, you're just like, well, that's, you know, it is. And then you see these things and you're like, what is this? And he loves this stuff. He's like, man, I'm really curious as to what's going on. But when he was telling me about the orbs, I mean, you could see he was like, man, 
He goes, we went to getting everybody. We brought everybody into the room. Let so them they take was, a look to see what uh, they thought. Yeah. yeah. Run it by everybody. Don't. But you know how officers are. They don't tell you anything. They want to watch your reaction of you watching it. Right. Yeah. And then after it's all done and each person, that way nobody can, they don't infect the pool of it. You know, they don't muddy the waters. They want to get your, and all of them were like, I don't know what that is. So. It's we, pretty interesting though. I like the idea. A security of that. footage. Yes. Of, of maybe that was their soul or their spirit or whatever it was leaving that room. You hear stories, uh, I always think of like nurses telling stories in like yep. the ER and stuff of seeing similar things. Yes. Bizarre things. So yeah. that's cool. If you have any stories of your own you'd like to share with me and Cam, please feel free to email the show at expandedperspectives at yahoo.com. Um, Cam, what do you got planned for your week? Uh, I don't really know. I mean, we're talking about jumping into the first part of November, just kind of getting back in the groove. I don't know that I got anything wild. Really. You got a birthday approaching. I do have a birthday coming up. Anything yep. special planned for that? Uh you guys going anywhere? Oh, of course not. We're not going anywhere. It's mine's too close to Thanksgiving, so I never get to have that much fun. We'll have to do something either the week before or the week after. That sounds good. We might need to go bowling. We haven't been bowling since your birthday last. Did we bowl last year when we went to see the Meg before the Meg or no? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I don't remember. When did we do the? Was it two? I years like ago bowling. We all went bowling. I'm not any good at it, but I enjoy it when I do it. Yeah, that's me. I'm not, I'm terrible at it, but I do enjoy, I don't know. We'll have to figure out something. We'll have to go and, and try to get into some trouble. That sounds good. Well, I hope all y'all stay out of trouble. Till next time, I'm Kyle. He's Cam. Peace, y'all. <laughs>